You're tuned to the Rossi Way in association with Roscommon Lines Club on Ross FM 94.6. Well, today is World Bee Day and joining me on the line is the President of the Federation of Irish Beekeeping, the Beekeeping Association, Paul O'Brien. Paul, you're welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Welcome to listeners. Paul, tell us, uh, first of all, what, what is uh, World Bee Day, Bee Day all about? Well, a, a few years back, uh, the Slovenian uh, Beekeeping Association approached the United Nations and, 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 and the EU to set aside one day every year to celebrate the humble uh, honeybee. And uh, they managed to get this passed uh, about four years ago now, and we celebrate May 20th as World Bee Day, to bring people's attention and awareness to the plight and to the joy of the humble hum, uh, honeybee. And tell us, in terms of uh, the bee itself and the honeybee itself, how important is it to our, our environment, our, eco- our ecological system? Well, all of our pollinators are highly important, uh, but the bees and the solitary bees and the honeybee are extremely important. And if I was to tell your listeners, if some catastrophe happened and we lost all of our pollinating insects and the, and the bees, uh, when you would go to your local supermarket and you go to your fruit and veg aisle, anything with a colour in it wouldn't be there anymore because we wouldn't be able to pollinate them ourselves as humans. They do that for us as insects. And uh, we'd have no oranges, no apples, no strawberries, and everything with a colour we wouldn't be there. So we'd have a diet of potatoes, cabbages and grasses. So so a very grey-green world we'd live in without our pollinators. It's like our recent COVID uh, pandemic. For, for many years, uh, we, we kind of took no heed of these viruses. And uh, we got one now that woke us all up. And it might be time again for your listeners to, to realise that globally, uh, we've lost 25% of the insect population have gone extinct. They're gone, they're not coming back. And at present, 80% of the global beekeeping, or honeybees, are being kept by beekeepers. Uh, they're struggling in the wild because of our habitat, the removal of our hedgerows, and our obsession with neat and tidy gardens uh, doesn't help them either. And uh, this, is, this, this will become a crisis, but we don't see it because it's happening every single day by little bit by little bit. And your listeners might remember, the listeners in my vintage, that many years ago when you drove across the country, your windscreen was covered in insects. Mm-hmm. Now you could drive all the way down to the bottom of France and you might take two insects off your car. We're excellent at destroying things, but we're not very good at looking at the consequences. How, how is uh, World Bee Day celebrated around the world? Are there any special events happening in Ireland or, or any... Well, this year we had planned to plant trees in, with, in, in local tidy towns mm-hmm. and things like that. But because of this COVID uh, uh, pandemic, all of these things have been set aside to next year in, in the interest of human safety. Uh, we will be more proactive next year in planting. And we, we, we have discussed with the tidy towns, and most of the tidy towns organizations in the country are very uh, positive in leaving certain roundabouts, you know, let the grass go into the mm-hmm. wild. Uh, the message of leaving the dandelions uh, for the month of April and not to touch them has been received well, and I thank the public for doing that because that's the primary pollen that they, all the insects, not just the bumble, uh, not just the honeybees, all the all the bees and all the insects need that, and we want to celebrate it. Hopefully, now next year when we can get back out and have the the more social gatherings, we will be planning events in every locality to to plant the tree. This year alone, uh, in, in association with Queenshire and the National Tree Council, we've planted 10,000 Irish trees throughout the country to help the, 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 the wildlife and the bees uh, get, keep their foothold in our countryside. And what, are, what can our uh, listeners do to help the honeybee and to help our pollinators? What can your listeners do? Uh, well, one of the simple things you can do is, if you do like honey and you wish to purchase honey, try and buy it from your local beekeeper. Uh, yes, it's, it, it, it's uh, fractionally more expensive than some of the stuff you might get in your local uh, high brand of supermarkets, but they're importing uh, from all over the globe, and uh, as people know, there's a lot of adulterated uh, products out there. Uh, by supporting your local beekeeper, you're supporting them in their hobbyist, hobby and small craft industries, and they're keeping the bees alive in our country. We're very unique in Ireland. We have a native species here called the, uh, the 
the Apis mellifera, mellifera is the European black bee, but we have a different strand of it. You know, we've been here, it's been here more than four million years, and uh, it's 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 a different strand. And we're, we're, there's a conservation uh, group called uh, NIBS, and they look after that, and we look after that as Fibca. And uh, by helping the local uh, beekeeper, you, you're indirectly are helping save these uh, native bees. Well, great advice there, uh, Paul. O'Brien, President of the Federation of Irish Beekeeping Associations. Thanks for joining us today. You're more than welcome, and I'll buzz off now.